we're living in interesting times, you know? Before this whole epidemic hit us, remember working nine to five and calling in sick to work? Right, you pick up the phone, call your boss, you're like, hey, I'm sorry, I'm not feeling so well. <coughs> you know, I'm coughing, I'm sneezing. I really don't think I can come into the office today. I've got a fever, right? And boss is like, all right. Hope you feel better soon. Take a day or two off. See you in a bit. But now, in this world, all you got to do is call up your boss and be like, um, hey, boss, um, yeah, how you doing, man? Um, uh, yeah, I, I might have been in contact with someone who might have been in contact with somebody who had COVID. And boss is like, all right, two weeks paid vacation. It's a whole new world. I wish I still worked nine to five. Two weeks paid vacation. COVID! Happy Valentine's Day. You look so pretty on Valentine's Day. Thank you so much. You look oh so goodness. handsome. Oh, thank you. Thank you. It's not because of Valentine's Day. It's because of any day. Mm, what's like that t-shirt you have? Oh, this is a zombie thriller, folks. Uh, by the way, I did a rap song called Zombie Thriller. It's all about uh, how the world's filled with zombies and how I kill them. All right. Zombie Thriller. You can find that on where all songs are sold. Um, Archambault. Uh, uh, where are songs sold? We know. iTunes, Spotify, all that good stuff. You can, you can find it on YouTube as well. Or is our microphone on? Just making sure. Our microphone should be on. All right. You can turn that light here. off behind us. Oh, which light? Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. That's why I'm the co- the, no, the, the producer, producer, the producer. The producer. No, I'm the host. There's no co-host for this no, show. I was going to say co-producer, co-producer, but I am the producer. <laughs> hey there, my name is Peter Hartman. You're watching Bad Guru Nightly, and I am Bad Guru. This show is meant to serve as a reminder that your attention matters. You see, what we give our attention to becomes a greater part of your experience. We shape our world with the power of our attention. So it's important to be deliberate. And I'm so glad you decided to give me some of your attention here. Tonight, we're here with the wonderful self-discovery life coach, Samantha Barley. We're going to be talking about love, loving yourself, loving others. Romantic uh, love. Romantic love. Oh, nice. Thank you. Mm. Uh, pandemic love, you know, mm. are you stuck with your love? Are you stuck with them? Mm. And uh, I'm gonna, Bad Girl is gonna be ranting later on about uh, love and how it ain't that special, how it ain't that great, all right? I don't know how love got put so high on the on a pedestal here. Let me not get, let, Bad Guru, let's, let's be Peter Hartman right now. We'll talk about that later. We're gonna have a fun time during the show. Thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate that you're here. How you doing? Doing very well yeah. on this Valentine's Day. It was a very nice day. Went for a walk again outdoors. Saw a lot of people on Mount Royal, um, families and skiers and tons of people enjoying um, their Valentine's Day. Out there walking, you sent me a picture. It yeah. looked like there's a good amount of people outside. It was outside. like a horde of people that I was like avoiding. <laughs> a horde of people. <laughs> <laughs> uh, really, you really, you've really painted a picture. You've let us know how you feel about those people. Oh, those zombie hordes out there, kill them! I'm always the one like on the other path, right? There's like a main path going up. I'm always the one who's like hiding on the small paths, trying to enjoy my time without like walking next to tons of people. And is this because of COVID, or is this because of uh, you're just a naturally bubbly social person? I suppose COVID has a little bit to do with it. A little bit to do with it, um, but also they're just in my way, you know? <laughs> That's always how I felt about people, you know? Either they're great or they're in your way, right? Yeah, yeah. No, I get that. It's I fun to that. watch them from a distance. I, I love them from a distance. I see how they're having fun and enjoying themselves, but I mean, I'm like, you know, oftentimes I'm walking pretty quickly and listen to my music and there they are and there they are. And so like I can, and, you know, take the path, the path less taken, you know? It's more interesting. It's more exciting. The path was taken. I like that. And people watching, that's really a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, I had someone, uh, when I was a kid, uh, there was this family friend uh, or something. Uh, I was at his house and uh, I walk into the living room and uh, he's got binoculars. <laughs> I know. It's not a good story to tell. I say binoculars. 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 And he's looking out the window and I'm like, hey, buddy, we're like, what are you doing? I just walked in. I don't know. I was probably like, I don't know, six years old, five years old. What are you doing? And uh, he's like, Peter? You have TV. That's your entertainment. This is my entertainment. So, you know, people watching can go a little far. It can yeah. go a little far. You know, it can yeah. be a little creepy. It can be a little strange. I didn't understand what that meant as a kid. 
Uh, but now I have my own pair of binoculars and I know exactly what he's talking about. <laughs> Thumbs down. Thumbs that. down. I like people watching too. I just said I'm the same as her. I'm the same as you. That's all I'm saying. I like people watching too. From a distance. You're just From a little a distance. creepy. A little creepy. Oh, you know what? Not sounding very loving. Mm. Not sounding very loving. Okay. It's lovingly creepy? <laughs> You're loving them from a distance? Um, I, I Look, I don't want to dive too much into it. I don't want to talk too much about it. You know, we don't have to spend much time about it. But, you know, pandemic love. It's a little different being in relationships uh, during this time. And I think it's a little, you know, maybe we'll spend a little bit of time of talking about it. But, of course. you know, uh, some people are stuck together. Uh, stuck. You know, they're, they're, I'm, I'm forecasting myself. I'm revealing myself stuck together. Some people are, are together and they can't leave. They don't want to leave. They don't want to leave, but they're stuck together and they can't leave. Um, but, you know, you're spending a lot. Some people are spending a lot more time together uh, than they ever have before. Some people are really loving it. I can imagine other people not liking it. You know, there's the, the number of marriages are going up as well as the number of divorces. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so like all, the, all that activity is happening. How have you been feeling in this time of stuck love? How have you been feeling in this time of pandemic love? How have I been feeling or how have I and my clients and everybody been feeling? Well, or you want to know all about me and how I feel about you You know, right I'm now? totally not interested in knowing about that. Do you feel like, th th do you sense a sentiment with, with people like having having difficulty dealing with it? I know when it comes to kids, I've, I've heard that. When so, it comes to kids around all the time. So you've been saying something recently, which is it's very hard to know what's going on with other people. <laughs> <laughs> we're used to doing events, right? Where we have a lot of people and we talk about things that are going on. We talk about personal development, our emotions and everything. And um, we haven't been doing that so much. And so the only at like, all. yeah, well, yeah, exactly. We haven't been doing that at all, except myself, I've been having one-on-ones with clients. So that's the only information I'm really getting other than maybe some articles here and there that's about, right. you know, some stuff that's going on, but it's, it's like, it's people in their private life. Like we don't know. They can hear a little bit about us if you want. <laughs> but but I find it's like hard to understand, hard to really grasp, like how is everybody feeling? I think we can more just think it through and what do we imagine it would be like with all the different types of relationships that are out there. And there are so many different types of relationships. So many people who are, you know, feeling differently about their partners, feeling differently about the people that they're with. So I guess we can sort of talk about that and talk about some of the solutions, uh, you know, to make it a little bit better if it's not necessarily as good as you would like it to be, which of course it's never gonna be as good as you would like it to be, right? Well, I think the first step is just recognizing and acknowledging that uh, more or less everyone's having a difficult time everybody's dealing with the challenge right you shouldn't feel guilty about feeling like oh why can't i deal with my lover for 12 hours a day versus uh four hours a day yeah you no know? because if you go to a job and your lover goes to a job and you come back home at the end of the day you know it's 5 30 6 o'clock and you're you eat together you deal with the activities whatever you have to do deal with the kids you go to bed, you're spending like three, four hours together, really uh, together, you know, and never mind the time that you're sleeping together. Now, all of a sudden, that's hiked up times two, times three, times four. Don't feel guilty about the challenge that you might feel. Like maybe, I, I, I wonder if some maybe, people- I don't know about guilt. Maybe, maybe some people feel guilt, but don't feel like you're abnormal in any way or that you should be loving them more because you're with them more. Yeah, like, yeah. Maybe guilt is part of that. Like maybe they feel guilty because they don't love and enjoy that time as much as they think that they should. That's right. That's right? what that's what I was about to say. Like, you know, you you might feel like, oh, I should love this much. I should feel this way. Why don't I feel the same that I did before? And just accept. You know, look, if you 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 love your job, if you were at your job uh, twice as much, would you love your job twice as much? I don't know. So mm -hmm. just accept that we're dealing with challenges, and you might be like us, not knowing how other people are feeling and not being able to get into other people's heads yeah. and not knowing the space that's there. And so you might be by yourself. Maybe you're critical. Maybe you're judging. Maybe you're worried. Maybe you're concerned. Maybe there is something to be concerned about but just recognize that you're you're dealing with uh we're all dealing with this challenge and the way you are experiencing it is okay yeah absolutely um it sort of like it sort of reminds me of myself and how i love so i actually 
really felt a lot of, I don't know if it's guilt, but a feeling of, hey, I should be loving you more. Like Peter and I have been together how many years? <laughs> so feels like a hundred. Yeah, so maybe 15, 15 years, maybe more even, honestly. I guess we'll do the calculations. I'm a young man. I'm, I'm 22 years old, so. But there was a little period of time, maybe a couple of years, a little, couple of years where we weren't together. However, okay, so I've, I've dealt with many challenges in my life. So um, self-esteem issues, self-love issues. When I was younger, I dealt with addiction. So that was like a teenage thing. Um, but over the years, I've really been into personal development and working on myself. And that's, that's how I'm able to coach people now. But over the years, um, even with Peter, and he knows this, I always, I, I, I often felt that I didn't love him as much as he loved me and that I, I wasn't loving in the way that people love, that there was something lacking. Um, and so I was comparing myself, I suppose, to movies, to people that I know, to the way that I think people should feel about other people. Um, and I think that that's something that could be going on with many people. So I, I'm happy to talk about it. Um, for myself, what it has come down to and what I've realized is that um, I wasn't appreciating myself nearly enough. I was very self-critical, very very um, hurtful to, to, to the way that I was seeing myself in the mirror, um, you know, how I, how I just judged myself a, a lot. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't have that appreciation, that seeing the qualities in the people, the person that I love, of um, choosing to see their good as opposed to looking at the things that I didn't like about them. So what I was doing is I was feeding into what I didn't like about Peter, <laughs> what I didn't like about Peter more than I was appreciating and loving. And that's the exact same thing that I was doing with myself, mm -hmm. the exact same thing that I was doing. I, instead of seeing my qualities, appreciating myself, loving who I am, I was being harsh, being critical. Even if I would do something good, I'd be like, yeah, but it's not good enough. So that translated to the way that I loved and the way that I you know, appreciated Peter. And um, what, what I've done over the years is learn how to appreciate myself, love myself, see my qualities, um, you know, be proud of myself, give myself the tap on the back. And that's exactly like when I started doing that, then it translated right away to you. It translated right away to recognizing your value, seeing the good things about you, mm -hmm. um, being like letting go of the things that are less enjoyable and reshifting my focus and being like, okay, well, there's that. He stinks a little. <laughs> no, no, that's not it. Well, I mean, there's I that. I stink a little bit. Uh, yeah, but the, you know. <laughs> that's that's why it's really good that you're experiencing me on video. You know, one of the, you know, one day they're going to invent a technology where you're going to be able to smell what's happening there, and that'll be good for cooking shows and gardening, but it won't be good for Bad Guru Nightly. Uh, don't turn on that feature for Bad Guru Nightly. <laughs> The sm do smell of vision. Don't do it. <laughs> so, yeah. So looking at the things that maybe I didn't prefer, right? The things that weren't as as much as I, like I, the things I didn't want so much. Mm -hmm. And then just shifting it to, oh, yeah, but look at this, 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 all these different qualities. And then practicing doing that because it does take practice. If you're somebody who, who was dealing with stuff like I was, it takes consistency and a willingness to appreciate myself, appreciate him, appreciate myself, appreciate him. Um, and so I, I imagine that people during this time are probably recognizing things like that with themselves, that they're more irritated. They're focusing a little bit more on the things that they don't like, right? Living in the same place with people, um, <laughs> You see their, their bad sides, right? <laughs> some of us don't have bad sides. Some huh? of us have, you know, um, you know, a shade of gray here or there. But some of us are pretty awesome and spectacular. And then other people are like Sam. So I really like that. <laughs> Just joking. It's actually been really good. What, what I wanted to mention while you were talking about this is um, the pressure cooker that is this situation mm -hmm. is sort of a, might be for some people a blessing in disguise. Mm -hmm. Sort of causes you to have this intensive experience uh, to realize if this is something that you like or something that you don't like. You know, there, there's a lot of um, acceleration of relationships that have occurred because of the pandemic, because people realized 
hey, wait, I do like spending. I used to be worried about living with this person. I used to be worried about spending all my time with them. But even now that I've spent all this time with them and not been able to spend time with others, right? So this is concentrated uh, effect. Mm -hmm. uh, then you realize, oh, really? I'm not really that bothered or that annoyed or that afraid. I'm not really that irritated by what goes on. Look, there are things that you did that irritate me. But actually having you around uh, more and more, uh, there's far more things that, uh, that, that I enjoy. And when you don't see the person as much then the division of how much you experience that you that you find annoying and how much you like in some cases can actually be too even mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. you, you're seeing somebody for a, a, a weekend and the, the things you don't like and you don't, that you do like they're they're there but when they're there seven days out of the week mm -hmm. then you might realize oh that irritating stuff is occurs rarely like mm -hmm. it might occur in a moment during the day but then there's so many more hours where yeah. it's not the case and so it really puts things into perspective at least that's that's my experience yeah you have a chance to see more of who the person is that's right and as as the person we each also have that opportunity to show our best selves right to then make better decisions when it comes to interacting with the with our lover right we we'd be more willful we choose to do things that are kind for them or appreciate them more. Like we have that opportunity to really like shine, like make the efforts because relationships are effort. Do you agree? Relationships are effort. They're an effort worth making, right? And that's the, the hard part, choosing who to place your effort with. Um, sometimes you can fall into the, the category of always trying to find the grass is always greener. It's always better. That's another thing that's good with the pandemic. It kind of gets you kind of like, stuck but not stuck mm -hmm. in a bad way like like this is what you have to deal with and i think in our society there's a lot of throwaway culture there's a lot of like oh it's not good enough it's not perfect i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna mm -hmm. replace it you know mm -hmm. uh, but uh, when things become a little bit more swipe irreplaceable left, swipe right which one swipe left so i don't Swipe left is the, I don't like. I don't do the swipe, so, you know, it's been... <laughs> but it's harder, it's harder to do that. Like, I, I don't know, maybe it's not harder. I'm not out there dating or anything like that. Uh, maybe okay. people are, are, are connecting, but um, but there there is a sense of, you know, you have less options, and so you're either going to be miserable or you're going to find some way to make whatever you have work. Um, and uh, in some ways, I think that's a good thing. I think our culture is a little too quick to... Uh, look for the perfect yeah. uh, as opposed to making making yeah. the perfect. Yeah. And it also has to do with what I was saying before, the attention you're giving to their qualities versus the things that you don't like, right? Um, if you're dating somebody, you're meeting somebody, and you're just paying attention to all the irritants, well, you're not going to like them. You're not going to fall in love with them if you're just irritated all the time. And if you're somebody who's irritated all the time, just in general, oof. It's hard because I, I know what it's like. <laughs> I've done I've been there, done that. I'm actually irritated all the time. A lot of things bother me. In fact, one of the traits of an entrepreneur is to be interminably annoyed at everything because you constantly have a mind of thinking, how can something be better? How can something be improved? Why, why isn't this better? Why hasn't someone improved this? So I do have this mentality that puts me in a state where I'm constantly annoyed about what's going on. And what I learned uh, a few years ago, many years ago, is that that I would never really, personally, looking at my life, I could never really succeed at diminishing my annoyances because they were a key part to my mm -hmm. personality. I like looking at ways uh, for things to be improved. But there's a difference between the way that you might do it and the way that I used to do it or can still do it. I, I think the difference is what you mentioned earlier. Yeah. It's not so much that you you stop seeing or stop being annoyed. It's that you've amplified your appreciation to so that it's at a greater level than mm -hmm. your annoyances. So mm -hmm. I can still be just as annoyed, but I have totally boosted up uh, my ability to appreciate and my ability to love, therefore putting into sharper contrast, into real perspective, uh, the negatives that I was feeling. So mm -hmm. I, I don't mind being annoyed. Like if my annoyances were problematic, if I wasn't solution oriented, if that, I was just doing yeah. a negativity, yeah. then it wouldn't be good. But when I'm annoyed, my impulse is then to ask myself, what can I do? How can things be better? Yeah. So and, that's uh, the difference that I, I was thinking. That's the difference that I was thinking is um, you can be irritated and annoyed and solution oriented or irritated and annoyed and say, I want to get out of here. I don't like this. Is there another guy? Is there another girl? That's like, right. is there somebody better who doesn't have all these things? Like, you know, and maybe that is the solution. Like, and there is, there <laughs> absolutely is. You see, that's the problem when it comes to this because- Is if, somebody better than me? Come on, 
Look, for you, whatever car you're driving, whatever place you're living in, whatever city you love, whatever partner you have, whatever mother you have, there's a better one out there, folks. And sometimes you got to be willing to let go of what you got and go looking for it, okay? Nobody says you got to be where you got to be. But generally speaking, I think it's better to just love what you got and make what you got something that you want, you know? I think it's, uh, my, mom, my mom taught me, um, I remember I had this moment when I was a kid, how old was I? 12 years old, I think, 11, 12. And I had just found out, this is just like blew my mind, that two girls liked me. <laughs> two girls liked me, and I liked both of them. Wow. I like both of them. And I, and one I was like sort of with, and then there was another one. And uh, I mean, we weren't dating, but I was like, oh, you know. And then I found out this other one and I was like, mom, uh, I, you know, I, I like this girl. And then there's another girl, but there's another girl that I like. And I've always liked. And she's like, Peter, a bird, a bird in hand is worth two in the bush. You know, it's like what you got, if you like what you got, then like what you got. You keep wasting your time looking at, oh, but the other one could be good. Like, if you don't like what you got, that's a whole other thing. But if you like what you got, um, you don't got to be um, hunting for more. And that lesson, that that message really stuck in my mind. I recognized in that moment what I was doing mm. myself and how stupid it was. Mm -hmm. Like, it wasn't a problem that I had a girl that I liked and another girl that I liked. That's not a problem. Mm -hmm. I, 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 that's not... Like, just choose who, who choose the one that you're with and like let that be the end of the story. And that's exactly what I did. And it really worked out. And every time, I've almost every single time I've been really faced... didn't really work out because she's not here. I was 11 years old. I'm what glad. is it? It's not the 1930s. I'm, I'm, glad gonna... it, I'm glad it didn't work out. I'm just saying. <laughs> but that lesson that... that, that, that um, <laughs> That lesson that my mom taught me really helped yeah. me as I went through life because there were many times where you want to sort of cut and run and let go of stuff, especially when it comes to relationships. That can be difficult. Uh, but uh, not I, with me. Come on, you're 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 worth two birds, okay? You're worth two <laughs> birds. I'm looking for the three birds. That's what I'm looking for. You know, she's a two bird girl. I'm looking for a three bird. Now, so weird. come on, I can't be romantic. You know me. I can't do that. He is off camera sometimes. Okay. Sometimes. Camera. No, no, no. I'm like, whatever, woman. That's who I am. That's who I am. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho. So, yeah. Love during the pandemic. Um, I think it can be a blessing. It can be a curse. But uh, it's, it's going to heavily depend on the attitude that you have. Look, maybe you're one of those situations where you realize, no, I'm what what's going on here isn't good. And yeah. I'm not with somebody that I want to spend time with. And I don't want to uh, continue this. And maybe I only continued it before because it was easier for me to ignore it because I spent so little time with them. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, now is the time for you to sort of recognize. It's difficult. I think that's good too. It's difficult because you're like, oh, I'm going to leave my partner. Yep. And then I'm going to be, how am I going to meet people? Mm -hmm. I've, I've talked to people like that. They're like, yeah. how am I going to meet somebody? Yeah. Like, what am I supposed to do? Yeah. I'm supposed to go on Zoom dates? You know? Yeah. I don't know. Well, people, people, some of my clients are doing like social distancing, dating, walking mm -hmm. outside, those types of things. So like it is that. possible. Yeah. It's definitely possible. Yeah. But if enough of those people do it, then they end up being a horde that we have to avoid. <laughs> you know? And we don't like that. Those hordes out there. <laughs> I thought you might like horde zombies, zombie horde. <laughs> she knows me. Fantastic. So we talk about loving uh, others. Uh, we touched on loving yourself. Mm -hmm. Honestly, the foundation of this all uh, of all this. I asked myself, do you have to love yourself in order to love others? Ah, that's great. I was thinking the same thing. We didn't even talk about this before the show. We we're in sync. That's we're good. Connected. That's we good. finish each other's pies. It, that's exactly what I was thinking. Pies. Oh my god. Can you love? Can you not love yourself but love others? And you know, honestly, I think in some ways you can. I, from my perspective, I think the way we define love in this Disney sort of love is really not love. I think love is really a bundle of other things. Respect, you know, um, um, self-esteem, courage, uh, uh, anticipation. Like there's a, lot of, there's a lot of things that go into the category of love. Seeing, seeing their value. Appreciation, seeing, appreciation. seeing their value. There are definitely people who are appreciating others and not themselves. Yeah. That wasn't me, but <laughs> I mean... You stayed, you stayed, so at least I was somewhat, right? I think we all love ourselves to a degree. I don't think there's anybody who totally doesn't love themselves. You know, um, uh, you know, you probably see that person coming from a mile away. I think we all have some degree of loving ourselves. It's the only thing that, it's what we mine 
to find our motivation and the inspiration to even make ourselves better, right? Mm -hmm. So I would argue that there's no, there is no point in your life where you didn't love yourself. You might have lost sight of, of your love for yourself, but you of didn't course. love something of yourself. Yeah, and um, you know, and that's what I see in people. That's what I see in you. Mm -hmm. It's this um, striving to become better and that appreciation, that respect, uh, and the courage it takes to do that. I think that's all a formulation formulation of love. So can you love someone else, um, uh, but not love yourself? To an extent, yeah. To an extent, you can. Yeah. To an extent, you can. Is it easier to love someone else when you love yourself? Absolutely. I think so. I think so. I think if you have to put focus anywhere, let your primary focus be on loving yourself. The point that I wanted to sort of question is you often hear you need to love yourself before you get into a relationship. You need to love yourself before... You, f you go and you find that person. That That's something you hear often is learn to love yourself first. Learn to love yourself first. And it sounds like very good advice. I mean, I would have probably said that to people before, right? If I know the context, I know who they are. It's like, it's definitely better to appreciate yourself, value yourself, see, see your qualities, and then connect with another person because you're not going to be so dependent on them. You're not going to be need, 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 gimme, gimme, gimme the love that I need that I don't have for myself. Exactly. Right? Right? So it's definitely something that sounds good. But when I think it through and the experience that I have had with lower self-esteem and meeting you, the love that I received from you has made me learn to see the value of myself and love myself more so there are gray areas it's not always just oh no you cannot go get into a relationship if you don't love yourself it's let's let's see i mean maybe that is something that will be the catalyst for you to figure it out and to learn to love yourself somebody sees your value they express it to you they tell you then you're like wait a second if they see my value maybe there's something there Maybe there is something there and that's over the years like that's something that has helped me tremendously with you and so when i hear that sort of you know blanket statement oh no love yourself first it's like well maybe not you know maybe maybe it's okay to go and date and see how it works and what happens and make mistakes and learn from it right um yeah. i think as a rule of thumb as a principle certainly you want to love yourself first before you engage in anything you want to sort of be in sure footing before you before you take some type of leap of course but we don't live in a world of of perfections and ideals no. it's like oh, it's good to eat healthy well what do i do if i don't <laughs> eat healthy does yeah. that mean i can't i can't go to a restaurant yeah. i can't do these things well no you're going to involve your 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 strategy you're going to involve your behavior and you can evolve over time i think the loving yourself thing really is about the choice that you make in your heart for the direction that you're going to be focusing in. So there's, there's, you can feel sad and be oriented towards feeling sad, or you can feel sad and be oriented towards something more positive. The state of feeling sad is itself the state that you're in, but where you're choosing to face will determine the likelihood of where you're going to go. So you can be in a state of loving yourself, but not enough or mm -hmm. not, not to a high degree, but mm -hmm. wanting to, mm -hmm. and that wanting to, to me is a love. Like to me, love is a choice. It's the choice that you're making in order to orient yourself. I am going to make decisions that I believe are more constructive in behavior, that are more edifying in behavior, that will lift people up and shine a light more so than not. And I might be failing at it or not good at it or whatever it is, but I am trying to, and that's to me, loving yourself. Loving mm -hmm. yourself is not some set of conditions yeah. that need to be met. You have to be smiling all the time. Yeah. You have to have your heart filled and yeah. pumping. That's not what loving yourself means. Even somebody who has very high self-esteem does not love themselves all the time. They feel bad about things. They criticize themselves. In those moments, they're not loving themselves. That's right. Right? And I, so I feel like if you have, if you have, and this probably applies to some people at different times in their lives, if you have like really no love for yourself, mm -hmm. Uh, then that's really what you want to focus on because the likelihood that the person you're going to be interacting with will be able to reach you and bring you out or anything like that, I think is low in terms of a romantic love. It's also, I think, sort of dangerous. Like if you really do not love yourself, the type of person that you're going to engage with is not likely to be very healthy for you. And it, I mean, people get into abusive relationships and, and, and the like, like that's something that you hear a lot about this pandemic. Um, you know, 
abusive relationships. And so, yeah, if you're really down there, start reading some self-help books, get a life coach, watch us. <laughs> that's right, talking to the right people. And that's yeah. where uh, I agree with you, with your point where um, we are social creatures. And it's unfair to ask that we as individuals do everything on our own, that we that oh, yeah. we are supposed to be supermen. We're social creatures and the people who are around us. Yes, it could be life coaches. It could be uh, colleagues. It could be friends and family. But whoever is around you, um, I, I don't honestly think it's a responsibility, even of the person on the street as a society, to rely on each other for what we need. Right. And so if you had a deficit in food, right. You, and, or money or something, and somebody said, uh, or a job, somebody said, no, you got to get that right before you go out and interact with people. You're like, look, I have a deficit in food, and part of this solution is going to come about when I interact with other people who might give me food. Mm -hmm. Part of this money might be other people who give me money, welfare, or something like that. Like, it's not, it's not some failure of mine to have to depend on other people for my needs, and love might be one of those needs. Mm -hmm. And so I know that I used to feel love uh, I feel love going to a comedy show mm -hmm. because the comedian who's on stage, if they're a good comedian, is trying to make my day better. Like <laughs> they're trying to make me laugh. They're trying to do right by me. Mm -hmm. And I think that's important. And so in some ways, when you do your job well, when you smile at a stranger, when you open the door, like when, whatever you're, you're doing in society is helping other people to experience love and value for themselves. And so, yes, you finding love and having love within yourself is important, but relying on other people and seeing that love from other people and getting that even from a romantic relationship, I don't think is a, a bad way to go. Yeah. But again, it's a spectrum. It's a balance. You're going to determine yourself. Sometimes your problem with not loving yourself has to do with other people, codependency. And other times it has to do with something else. It could just be something that happened in your childhood or something, other things. So you're going to determine your deficiencies yeah. and what will make you stronger or not stronger. And sometimes it's experience. You're in a relationship, you're trying to feel love, they're, they're loving you, but then you're not receiving it and the relationship is getting all messy. Maybe that's a time for you. It's a sign for you to go and deal with love on your own. But if you're, you're feeling down or whatever, and then you get a relationship and that boosts your self-esteem, they're telling you, I love you, I love you. You're saying, I love you, I love you. You're getting physical contact with them. You're getting oxytocin. How dare you deny that of me just because I'm not so great on my own, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And um, honestly, the people who are great on their own, I don't think there's many of them <laughs> out there, you know? Not everybody is like great on their own. We're social creatures and that's okay. But they can be great on their own. Maybe they're not in a relationship, but they have a lot of friends and family and the romantic relationship is not that's necessarily... Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah. 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 Fantastic. So we thought about love, love yourself. That's very important. Loving others, equally important. You know, let's say 49, 51, uh, 51, 49. Pandemic love, we talked about that. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my God. The only thing I have to. Oh my God. What's what I gotta? This bad guru's gotta talk next. How about uh, just a few solutions? Just a few solutions to yes, bad guru will come on. Soon. And he's gonna explain how all this stuff we just said was total crap. Okay, it's no. all total no. crap. Calm down. You can't come out. Calm down, bad guru. You can't come out. Not yet. <laughs> so some solutions um, for myself to love you more. Not hard to do, though. Oh, thank you so Sorry, much. not hard to do. Oh, my goodness. Not hard to do. It's not oh hard to love God. this guy. I think you, you, if you've seen Peter a little bit, you, you know it. <laughs> not everybody likes me. <laughs> Some people really don't like me. I think a lot of people like you. <laughs> oh, the names I've been called recently. Anyway, I'll talk about that oh, later. Oh, yeah, that's... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> not everybody likes you, you know, but people who don't like me don't tend to not really know me. But anyway, anyway, it's not, yeah, about, me. It's not about me. They don't know. It's about solutions. Solutions. Um, so some of the solutions that I found that are incredibly important for me is, well, first of all, my solution is I got to take care of me. I have to be doing the good things that make me myself, make me light, make me connected to who I am. Mm -hmm. So huge one recently that um, has been helping me because here it's winter right now in Canada, Montreal, Quebec, um, is getting sunlight before noon. I try before 10 a.m. So to get sunlight, I recently found out how important getting sunlight is for mood, for circadian rhythm, for having a better night's sleep, which also affects your mood and how you feel. It affects your hormones. It affects everything. So um, I've been getting up, going out, getting exercise and sunlight every morning. And it's had a very big impact on me, like very big impact on the rest of the day, how I feel, how I interact with Peter. And um, it's just something that I didn't like I knew, like, of course, you know, 
you know exercise and light but then when i heard like a neuroscientist really like talk about the details of it and how it affects everything and um the pineal gland and how it excretes something in the pineal gland to help you sleep better and it's just crazy the stuff like i really like hearing details hearing details about things make me want to do them you know um and this is andrew andrew huberman fantastic look him up on youtube he's got tons of podcasts on um instagram as well so that's one thing that has had a very big impact. And it's so it's night and day when you go outside yeah, and do light. It and is. Sometimes you don't feel, have the motivation yeah, to go out. That's right. And uh, how do you feel when you're like, oh, I, I almost didn't come outside? And oh yeah, no. So oftentimes I don't feel like it, which is crazy because I feel much better afterwards. But you know, when you're starting a new habit, and it's only been I don't know, maybe maybe over a month or I don't know how long it's been, but it's a habit that I'm like creating. So it takes that push, right? It takes that push. But now I'm starting to remember before I go out that, oh, I'm going to feel better. I'm going to get along better with Peter. I'm going to like feel more love, feel more enjoyment, just satisfaction. And so it's not as hard to get out. Um, some days uh, I don't remember that. And I'm like, I just got to go anyway. And then I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. That's right. This is who I really am. Like, it's very easy. Okay. I don't know about you guys, but for me, I can get sort of caught in a sort of like days, like a days of lost a trance. In, a trance i think it's like trance like um lost in thoughts not in the present moment um like not feeling terrible sometimes i feel terrible not but most of the time it's not terrible it's just it's not my optimal it, it doesn't feel as good as i could feel if i made that little effort you know so making that little effort it changes so many things and i talk with clients all the time and they're like looking for what is the answer? What is the perfect thing, the best thing? And it's like, no, choose one thing that'll be helpful and do that consistently, consistently. I'm saying that right, right? You're, you're saying it. <laughs> Sounded weird. <laughs> we got to ask uh, Siri now. <laughs> do that thing consistently and see how you feel. Don't try all the things. You don't have to read another book, right? There's so many things that you already know what that can be helpful. Do the thing that's the easiest for you to do right now or the thing that you're interested in doing and give it a shot and see what happens and then see how you interact with your partner after that and don't talk yourself out of taking action because you know it's really funny sometimes uh sam will go outside into the light you know after you <laughs> know like oh talk like ah. after talking yourself into it and she'll come back after you know half an hour an hour or something she'll be like peter I can't believe I almost didn't go outside. I feel so much better. And I'm like, what? <laughs> How many times does it take for it to sink in? You got to keep going. Before you, you do just, that thing, yeah. it's so easy to talk yourself. I tell oh, people. Oh, yeah. So it's like, oh, it's too cold out this morning. I'm hungry. I'll just have coffee and eat first. No, go. Like, do the thing that you're supposed to do for yourself. Like, first thing. I, I call myself bad guru because um, it's a, just an acknowledgement that there's sort of two versions of you. There's the good one, the, re reducing it down to its simplest, uh, to a simple idea. There's the good one and there's the bad version of you. And I entertain the bad version of me. I let that bad version talk and say all the bad things. Not everything bad guru says, I believe 100%. Some of them are just coming out of my mouth. It's coming out of my, uh, out of my id. But I do it because you got to teach yourself one, how to listen to that voice, and two, how to tell it to shut the hell up. That's right. Like, whatever thing you're thinking, whatever voice is in your head when you're feeling down in the dumps that is convincing you not to do things, that to give up, that voice is a filthy liar, okay? And you should not, you yeah. should listen to it and just not believe it. In fact, yeah. just point at it and be like, you stupid liar. I'm going to go outside and prove you wrong. You go outside and you realize, oh my God, I can't believe I almost talked myself out of this. Yep. That bad Sam, yep. that bad yep. guru. Yep. And over time, eventually, the positive voice, the reinforcing voice, the voice that goes out becomes stronger. That's what my experience has been over the years. Like I've had very critical voices in my head over the years and 
it's just the consistency of saying, no, no, you are not real. That's not how I want to feel. How do I want to feel? Oh yeah, this is it. And just again and again and again. And then that becomes so much stronger. And then you're actually somebody different. You are not that depressed voice. You are not that sad voice. You you still get it. You do still get it, but you shush it. You shush and you say, I'm not, I'm not going to let you take over. And I know how I really want to feel. I know what's really important to me. And you just keep keep at it. That's what life is. That's what life is, is just what do I really want? How do I want to feel? And let me make that effort that it takes. And if it's a mistake to take that effort, let the mistake be that you took the effort and it didn't work. Yeah. Right. Don't say, oh, but if I go for a walk, I'm not going to feel better. You don't feel better anyway. So go for the walk, okay? And be the version of you that still doesn't feel better after the walk. And you can just, that and at least there you can say, but I took a walk and I got exercise. So let me, let me praise that. I don't feel better, but I can praise myself for having done that thing. And that way you have a day where you praise yourself for something versus a day where you didn't praise yourself for something. That's just technically better on paper. Yeah. And you add those up. And then uh, sands become a sand pile, become a beach. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly uh, you're lacing there in your in your bikini or your your speedo, and uh, and uh, you're drinking your pina coladas. Yeah. Virgin, don't drink alcohol during this time of COVID. Come on they now. They do. And they you go do. Swimming don't tell the them salt not to. Ocean. They're gonna do it. <laughs> go swimming in salt. All through. I was gonna go take it to a very weird place. I don't know. That's I, bad guru. He's coming out. I didn't know where I was gonna go. Sometimes I tell stories. I start them, and uh, with with just no plan on where they're gonna go. But the the purpose is just to say something more and more absurd. I make her laugh too, so much because so she funny. pees, almost pees, almost she pees. pees sometimes. I have peed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting better at not peeing. Uh, that's fun. That's a good solution. You know, making those efforts, uh, you know, going outside is one of those things. You talked about something else earlier, um, some type of meditation. Oh, so loving kindness meditation. If you Google it, you'll, you'll find some stuff. You could put uh, loving kindness meditation, Sam Harris. I love Sam Harris. Not as much as Peter Hartman, but I love Sam Harris. <laughs> he has uh, an app called Waking Up. That's his app, right? Yes, that's his app. It used to be his podcast, but his podcast is now making sense. So waking up app, uh, loving kindness meditation is where you um, think about the person you care about or anybody. It could be neighbor, somebody you don't know, and you send well wishes to them in your mind. So you think about them and you think, um, I want them to be happy. I want them to enjoy peace. I don't want them to have too much suffering. I want them to enjoy their life. And you ma imagine them and just think these nice things. And as you're doing that, you begin to feel a sense of kindness and peace and compassion towards your fellow man, towards your lover, towards your parents. Um, and you can start with people who it's easy to love, people who it's easy, who you really want the best for and um, you know, build that up, you actually feel it. Like you feel it in your body, right? When you conjure up emotions, like you can conjure up emotions. Um, not everybody knows that, but with your thoughts, you can conjure up how you want to feel. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and maybe if you don't want to do it with your thoughts, you can do it with things, with music, with TV shows, with something you're watching, uh, reading, uh, YouTube videos. I mean, make yourself feel the way you want to feel, at yeah. least deliberately on purpose, anyway. Yeah, no, thank you for chiming in. Um, so you can start with somebody who it's easy and then you can sort of move on to somebody who it's more neutral, like the cashier that you saw this morning. And then you can then, if you want to, go and talk to somebody that is, uh, not talk to somebody, but think about somebody who you have a little bit of an irritation with, somebody who you don't like, somebody who bothers you and do that exercise. And you'll see that that anger, that frustration sort of melts a little bit. It's uh, You don't feel as bad for them because you see them not not bad for them bad about them because you see them just as a fellow human being who's suffering and who's living on this planet and and yes yeah, sure they might not be your best friend but you can have compassion for them and that just changes how you how you feel with people so loving kindness meditation very powerful 
Very good. Uh, speaking of loving kindness, thank you for your comments. Heather Boyd says, hey guys, happy Valentine's Day. Happy, happy Valentine's, Valentine's Day. Day. <laughs> Thanks for watching. My niece says, we love you too, guys. Oh, Smiley face, happy wow. Valentine's Day. Oh, thank you so much. I love you. Thank you for watching the show. Really appreciate it. Uh, thank you so much for watching and for commenting. Really like that. Uh, for everybody who's watching this, if you're watching this after the fact, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that like so that we, uh, that when you, we know you like the video and make sure to share it with somebody if like them hit that little bell so that you know when we go live we upload videos we got the great content we're doing wonderful things thank you everybody for watching i want to add uh, to your loving kindness mm -hmm. uh, meditation i teach this thing called fantasy meditation yeah. and uh one of the things that i think is fun to do is just to imagine things not for the sake of visualizing something for it to occur but just for the pleasure that you get in the idea and one of my favorite things to do one of my favorite things to do is to imagine that you somehow got a billion dollars all right, or a hundred million dollars, a billion dollars, whatever, whatever number. And then in your mind, spend that money on your family, friends, and the people that you care about. Spend it. Mm -hmm. Imagine it. Like literally imagine the steps that I went and I bought the uh, iPad and then uh, I chose it. And oh my God, they're going to really like this one. And then how will I package it? Is there some surprise way that I would give it to them? And then how will they look when they open it up? And what would they do on it? And how happy would they be? And then buy them a yacht and buy them a house and buy them, like whatever it is, just spend the money, spend the money on the people that you care about in your mind. It's a super fun thing to do. I used to do this Almost every time to go to bed, I just imagine spending money and what I would buy. Not for the sake of having it done. I'm never going to have a billion dollars. Mm. That just that just mm. hit me right there. I just. <laughs> but, a billion? Uh, we don't need a billion dollars. <laughs> look, some of us have big ideas, you know, and a billion is not even close enough, okay? A billion is not even close enough. Anyway, uh, you can have fun doing that. You can have fun doing that. And what it did for me is that it kind of... First of all, I was surprised mm. by how good it felt to spend imaginary money <laughs> on my family and friends. I, I was surprised. And the love that you got from it, you start realizing, oh my God, I really do want the people I care about to feel good. Not just feel good, but I want, the, I want them to have moments in their life where they feel just utter greatness and joy and happiness. And then it gave me motivation to work hard and to do things and in order to achieve a success in life so that... I can have some type of piece of that, some t something that I can give to other people. And sometimes it's just a kind word or a, a small gift or something that doesn't, doesn't even cost money. You start realizing, oh my God, I can make this person feel this way right now. If I send them this message, if I say this thing, if I tell them a joke, you know, sometimes I craft jokes just for Sam. I craft them just to make her laugh. Like I'll sit and I'll think, okay, if I say this and then I'll wait for timing and I'll wait for it to happen and I'll save the joke and then something will happen and I'll boom, throw it out there and then she'll laugh till she pees or almost pees and I'll be like laughing i'm like oh my god it worked out so great and what i did was i just took time just private time and i cultivated what was in my mind my thoughts so that i could have this experience with her and doing that with fantasy meditation spending that money in your mind might reveal to you just how much love you feel for the people who are in your life you know maybe your mother annoys you you know, but how how much will she annoy you the day you buy her a house? You know what I mean? Like, imagine that. Imagine how you just imagine the most curmudgeon person in your family and you did something really great and unexpected for them. How would how would that make them feel? Would they really still be against you? Would they really be holding uh, grudges? I don't yeah. know. Yeah. It's a fun thing I for them to do. It's a fun game. And I suggest you do it. Love it. Love and kindness, meditation, fantasy meditation, pandemic love, all things love. Hey, Sam wanted to talk about all things love. And I was like, hey, this is, this is totally unfocused. What are we going to talk about? We're not going to talk about anything. <laughs> She's totally right. Totally right. We always have something to say. <laughs> we haven't been doing our meetups, so we have lots to say. So, and so people are watching, but we don't see for We don't see reason. the count. I don't know why. Yeah, well, people that's are, good. Yeah. I'm glad that you're watching. If you're watching, feel free to comment. Uh, but we're wrapping up the show right now. Oh, it's been over an hour. Oh, no, it's not, it hasn't been an hour since we've been actually on the show. So, but uh, we're coming close to this. So, Bad Guru is going to be uh, making an appearance in just one moment. He's going to be joking a little bit. I won't keep you very long. He won't keep you very long. Uh, but if this is when you have to leave, thank you so much for watching the show. I really appreciate it. This has been Self Discovery Life Coach Samantha Barley. You can find her at samanthabarley.com. She's a wonderful, excellent life coach, and you definitely want to give her a call or a message or something like Thanks. that. Uh, she's super talented, super wonderful. She coaches me. You know, if you want to know why Bad Guru is the way he is, you know. And when he I'm, coaches me, so. Yeah, when I'm down in the dumps, dumps I go, Sam, and, and then 
she'll talk to me and then I'll feel better afterwards. Oh, thank you, thank you so much. All right. <laughs> That's it for the show. For, oh, no, that's not it for the show. Bag, Bag is going to be talking about. She's going to be joking a little bit um, later on. What I'm going to talk I'm going to give you an update on Black Money Matters, and we're going to have a little fun. I'm going to keep you very long, but thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate it. Happy Valentine's Aren't Day. Black Money Matters now? Tell, no. me, tell me about it. Tell me about it? Yeah. All right. I was going to joke about it, but... Uh, you can do that, but tell me about it. What is Black Money Matters? Black Money Matters is a social experiment intended to create black millionaires in an instant using crowdfunding and social media. Look, folks, we have the ability. We have the power. I don't know if you thought about this. We have the power to make a millionaire in an instant whenever we want. You know when you go onto the internet and you download a game like Candy Crush and you play it and then you get to a level and you can't really pass that level, so you put a dollar in so you can get to the next level? You know what you're doing? You're making those Candy Crush creators a millionaire, all right? Is there some good, great reason why you did this? No, it's for a game that they created that you want to move forward. Well, that mechanism of us just... Uh, uh, you know, the reason why those apps cost a dollar on the App Store is because they don't need to sell you a $60 application. They can sell you it for $1, but because 10 million people will download that game and pay that $1, they'll make $10 million, okay? That effect is repeatable, and you don't need a game in order to do it. All we have to do is pick a person and send them two bucks, a buck, five bucks, whatever it is you're willing to send them. And if enough of us do that, we make them a millionaire. I think it'd be a fun game. I think it'd be super fun. Absolutely. And uh, I, I call it Black Money Matters is because originally the idea was for everyone. And of course it will be for everyone eventually. Making millionaires. Making millionaires is that principle. But uh, Black Money Matters right now is my response to what happened with the protests in 2020 with Black Lives Matter and the George Floyd death. And I wanted to do something in order to help the black community. I actually talked to people who were like, hey, I want to do something to help the black community. I just don't know what. Mm -hmm. And this is something that can be done. Whether you're white or black or whatever you are, you can actually show your support. Uh, it goes beyond putting a black square on Instagram. I'm just, I, I don't know. I don't know how you feel about that, but just putting if a black square. If everybody that put a black square on Instagram sent a dollar, two dollars, five dollars, There'd be so many black millionaires. Millionaires, okay? And yeah. And then what, to... what is the importance of black millionaires? How is that going to help? Why? Why do we do that? The reason black millionaires, look, I get it. All right? Not everybody needs a million dollars, and it's sensational. But it's sensational for a point. It doesn't matter. Uh, the, the reason I want to do millionaires, one, is that I don't think it'll be very snappy for us to make a thousandaire. No, it's okay. not that engaging. Not, not that, that engaging. So I picked a million in order for it to be exciting. But we will, but we want to. Eventually, That's the plan. We'll, eventually we'll make a 100,000 air. Eventually we'll make a 10,000 air. Eventually we'll make a 1,000 air. If we have a large enough group of people and we're all engaged in this and That's we keep right. inviting people and more people get on board, more people can get on board, then we can just say, okay, let's help this single mom. Let's help... This entrepreneur. Let's, let's help this homeless man. Let's help this. Uh, yeah, send, send, send. And we'll start maybe with black money matters, but absolutely, we're, we want to do it for everybody. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. I just thought, you know, in, in response to the uh, Black Lives Matter, it was kind of in poor taste to be like, all lives matter. You know, they were explicitly saying, please don't say that. So, <laughs> you know, I decided not to do that. But eventually, uh, we uh, making millionaires will be an idea for everyone. But black money matters, I put this out there. Some people really love the idea. Some people freaking hate because it. Because they didn't understand it. Look, some people, they really, some people really get offended by the fact that it's a black thing. You know, why do you got to make it racial? I, I totally get it. I totally agree. I'm not trying to make it racial. All right. I'm just trying to address issues, uh, address an issue, an outcry an that issue, occurred. An issue that a lot of people are concerned about, right? It's like focusing on all those people who protested, all those people who put the black squares. Like there are so many people who care about this subject that why not do something about it to help people feel like they can make a difference? <laughs> Like, that's if you so post a black important. square, are you going to go, so oh, that's racial. Why isn't it a, a rainbow square or a, a white square or whatever? Yeah. <laughs> like, it's like because I'm trying to deal with an issue. So some people really did not like uh, the idea uh, because of the black thing. You just or have to hear more thing. about it, maybe. Or they have, people have different opinions. But the purpose of this is the reason it's, it's sensational. Uh, look, I really have to emphasize. It does not matter who we make a millionaire. What matters is that we make a millionaire. That's the whole point of this. The point of this is not the recipient. I'm not looking for the most deserving person to become a millionaire. Who gives a crap? There was this TV show on air uh, years ago called Who Wants to Be a Millionaire with Regis Philman. Uh, 
and a person sat down in the chair and yeah, he heard a little bit about their life, but the point of the show wasn't all oh, this great deserving person became a millionaire. The entertainment factor was like, oh my God, we're watching someone become a millionaire. And the truth is, it's not the show that made them a millionaire, it's you watching the show that made them a millionaire. It wasn't some altruistic guy out there going, I got an extra million, let me, let yeah. me give it over to someone. It's because you gave your attention to that show, it gave a value to that show, and not only were they able to give that person a million dollars, they were able to pay all their staff and create a business and them create raking profits all with the power of your attention. We're living in a world right now that is using your attention and people feel powerless because they feel manipulated, which you are by all the ads and all the things that you spend money on that you really don't need to spend money on, all the games that you waste your time in because you're addicted to them all the time and all the money that's wasted. I get that. I want to show people how much fun and how useful it would be to even just a little bit of your money, five bucks of your money, two bucks of your money, how much joy and pleasure and impact you can have on the world with just that, to the see, power of your attention. To see how powerful we are as a group, to put our attention on things that matter, things that are important to us, things that we want to do. It's If you've ever heard Peter talk about happy for a change, this is the happy for a change idea. And right now he's doing Black Money Matters, making black millionaires, and he's going to do making millionaires. But then there's also just the happy for a change idea, the, audience, which, the yeah. audience, which is getting enough people together in an audience. It could be, you know, just following us or being becoming a part of the group. And then if there's enough people, we can then say, hey, I really like this business. They're doing something good. You share it in the group. Other people can now like that Facebook page of that business. They can buy something from that business. They can share that business somewhere else. And we'll see that we can can make a difference. It doesn't have to be all about these other companies that are getting all the attention, right? It could be, hey, we care about this. Let's support this. I think that it's incredible idea. We just have to get the people on board, get on board with us, join the groups, join Happy for a Change, and let's see what we can do. Let's see how powerful we are. It's, it's a fantastic idea, and um, I think it's definitely going to work. We just got to get people in get people to understand this That's idea right. join the happy for change audience it's the happy audience over there on facebook.com slash happy for change just Click on the group that's there, the Happy for Change audience, and you can join. It's free. It only costs a little bit of your soul, but you know you weren't really using that anyway, were you? Um, I like to reuse and, jokes. <laughs> and then specifically, there's another group for Black Money Matters. We're trying to make three black millionaires by... February 28th, February 2021, 20th. the end of Black History Month. What a wonderful way to end Black History Month by making three black millionaires. Remind people that we see you, you're out there, we care. Uh, it's a small gesture, uh, but uh, I think it's on the level of a black square, except instead of it just being a black square, there's a black millionaire at the end of the day. How people can be against this idea is unbelievable! <laughs> unbelievable! But I'll tell you this, we much of your attention is being manipulated and directed, all right? Uh, where you spend your money and all that stuff is really being directed by other people in large part. But I want us to take a small amount of our money and direct it on purpose at will. Essentially, there are people out there who have great ideas, who want to do great things in the world, but they need there's this whole economy trying to get your attention, trying to get your attention. And I want people to start realizing, hey, we have to start giving over our attention voluntarily to what we choose. Mm -hmm. And so there are big companies out there who are able to get your attention a lot easier. But there's other smaller people out there, entrepreneurs, people doing great things who can't get your attention. They can't spend a billion dollars to get your attention. We have to start turning that around. And we want to create with the Happy Free Change audience, millions of people, a built-in audience, a market that's already there, people who carry about making the world a better place and are willing to do something small in order to get that done. And if we can do that, then the people out there creating don't have to spend any time trying to find the market, trying to find you. You say, here we are, come to us right here. The Happy for Change audience, Facebook.com, so it's Happy for Change. God damn it, this is a great idea. I'm it's losing it. I'm losing it. I'm All busting right. something. Bad guru. Oh, okay. Bad guru. Um, Heather says, I could write a book about my love of art. Mark thinks I'm obsessed. Heather, I am not surprised at all. Every single time I go on my phone on YouTube or something, I see something about Heather Boyd. That's right. You, you write that book, lady, and you sell me that book, lady. I will pay 1,000, I will, sp I will, I will pay 1,000 for your book, 100%. <laughs>
Yeah, write the book. I want to know about your love of art. Sam should write a book about love too. Uh, we were all obsessed about this topic. Really wonderful. I love the Happy for a Change audience and it's always been a lot of fun. And I've really loved this show and this Valentine's Day. Thank and you. We for love you. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Bagley's going to come on here. He's going to try and do a little bit of comedy. You'll, you'll forgive him if he... Uh, You'll forgive him if he's we'll not funny. We'll love you anyway. We'll love you anyway. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Self-discovery life coach, Samantha Barley. Self find her at samanthabarley.com. Uh, she's absolutely wonderful. Thanks. <laughs> and the board says, she's on it. She's on it. I really like that. Mm -hmm. I really love that. All right. That's it. Bye for me. Bye for now. Give me one second. I will transform into bad guru. See you soon. Hey there, folks, this is Bad Guru here to talk about love and all things love on this special edition of Bad Guru Nightly. Thank you for watching the show. Really appreciate it. As I was mentioning before, um, I've been on the, on the, on the hunt of um, pitching Black Money Matters, and uh, there's been a mixture of opinions. Uh, I shouldn't be surprised. You know, I really wanted, I wasn't surprised, but some people really love it and some people really hate it. And uh, I've had to experience what it's like to get sort of hate on the internet and uh, people not liking your idea. You know, it's one thing to understand in the abstract, somebody might not like your idea, black money matters, making black millionaires. It's one thing to, uh, to, uh, to think about that. It's another thing to actually read comments and to hear what people say who might be uh, aggressively against your idea. But I really appreciate it. And it's given me an opportunity to love myself. It's given me an opportunity to really love myself. Look, if you want to be able to exercise self-love in the face of adversity, post something you care about, something controversial on the internet. <laughs> I promise you, you're going to get all... Go on to Twitter. I'm joining the Twitter world. I've been tweeting up a storm, at least trying to. And, uh, you know, some people are like, uh, you know, telling me to shut the hell up and uh, uh, calling me racist. I want to create three black billionaires by the end of Black History Month. And some people call me a racist for doing that. You know, I get it. I get it. So I've had to love myself. I've had to practice that. It's been a little difficult because normally I'm standing in front of an audience and standing in front of people and there's people who like you, people who don't like you. You can tell when you're standing in front of an audience and you're doing stand-up comedy or motivational speaking or teaching or anything like that. You can know very quickly people who don't like you, you know, the way they look, you know, the way they look, how fast they leave. And you got to deal with that. You got to deal with that. But I haven't had to deal with that in ages now, since the beginning of 2020. I mean, the last time I was in front of an audience uh, for work, it was um, back in February and I did comedy. I wasn't a bad audience, but it's tough. So I haven't had the experience of really dealing with the voice within and calming myself down and accepting the criticism and judgments. And now that I'm on Twitter and on the internet again, on Reddit, uh, I get to practice again. I'm a little out of practice, but I'm getting better and better at it. Love yourself. That's my point. You got to love yourself despite what's going on. And thank you for the troublemakers out there who don't like me. They're not troublemakers. They just don't like me. But I really appreciate them because it gives me an opportunity to focus. Loving yourself. All right. I just wanted to mention that as a quick update for Black Money Matters. Still working at it. Look, we're trying to create three black millionaires by February 28, 2021. Look, I, this is an ambitious goal. If it doesn't work, it's not, I'm not gearing up. It's not over, right? We're going to keep continuing uh, past February. We're going to make this happen one way or the other. Some people I talked to really love this idea, so it really gives me a lot of inspiration, a lot of hope. Uh, so maybe I can get it done by February 28th. We are going to try. Join the Black Money Matters group. But uh, this idea ain't going nowhere, folks. I am in love with it. All right. What can we talk about? What can we talk about? Love. Love on Valentine's Day. Love. Love, love will keep us together. Think of me, babe, whenever some sweet talking guy comes along. Yeah, love, man. I got love in my heart. I got love because of the wonderful Samantha Barley. I got love because of my wonderful mother. I got love in my life because of my brother and uh, family and friends. My goodness, it feels good to be loved and it feels good to love them back. Love is an interesting thing, you know? I love uh, Samantha. Samantha Barley, she's really great. Love her dearly. Um, and she's around all the time now. You know? She's around all the time now. I'm not going to say too much. I'm just going to imply too much. You know what I mean? She's not around too much. I'm just going to imply too much. Hey, don't look at me like that. Don't look at me like that. She's not. Look, here's the thing. All right. You love someone, you love them and they're, they're and then they spend more and more time around you. And then you got to ask yourself, hey, 
What's really going on here, you know? What's really happening, you know? Overbearing, ever-present. I don't know what the right word is. Just consistently, consistently present. And I don't know, okay? I love my mother. I love her wonderful. I love her completely. But if I, like, woke up every single day and she was there, every single day, day i woke up and my mother was there good morning peter how are you doing what are we doing today i'd say mom i think it's time for me to see other mothers all right i think it's time for me to see other mothers i think your ever present is a little too much i'm of course exaggerating i don't want to see any other mothers i think one mother's enough uh <laughs> Anyway, these are jokes, folks, okay? This is just folks, okay? Sam knows their jokes. Okay, you don't get offended on her behalf, you know? She knows what I'm talking about. You know what I mean? Somebody there all the time is a little tough, but I love it. I love it, and I like getting used to it. It's one of the it's one of the fun things of this pandemic. All right. That was, <laughs> that was one joke. I think it's time I need to see other mothers, okay? I need to see other mothers. I feel like that was a recycled joke. Pretty sure I had a joke similar to that. Uh, in my mental break comedy special. Who cares? That's what comedians do. Comedians, they take a joke and they recycle that joke and they tweak that joke. All right? I'm doing Bad Guru Nightly. I got to do new jokes every single time. Come on, folks. I don't even have an audience to filter this through. Okay? I got Sam. I got Sam here. All right? She ain't laughing. Do you hear her laughing? <laughs> all right. She, that was the fakest laugh I've ever heard. That's so wrong. Anywho, I really love Samantha. You know, um, love is rare. Love is rare, you know? And when you get love, love is so rare. You got to hold on to that thing. You got to treat it well. You got to do it right, okay? And don't, 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 don't be weak with that stuff, okay? If you're going to fight for anything, fight for love. You know what I'm talking about? Love is rare. And love is so incredibly, love is rare and so incredibly special that if by some miracle it should appear in your life, love should appear in your life, but you're attached to someone else, you should still engage with it, okay? You gotta respect that love. You gotta respect that love, all right? Yeah, you love the person you're with, but if other love comes into your life, it's so special that you should, you know, cherish it. It's like getting two diamond rings. You're not gonna throw one away? What are you, crazy? Are you nuts? Some of these jokes would be easier to tell if Sam wasn't here. Uh, you know, I'm gonna have to deal with this afterwards. Ah, she's a good, she's a good sport. She's a good sport. Love is rare, folks. Come on. Whenever it shows up, two, three times, four times, five times, all at once. Come on. That's a, that's what we call a fun night. <laughs> you see, normally I tell jokes in front of an audience. And I'd hear a response from the audience. And then I'd know if uh, I was funny or if I was a piece of crap, you know. But um, right now I'm just going to have to self-love myself. I liked it. I thought it was funny. It was pretty good. You're nodding your head? Or are you listening to music or something? <laughs> All right. That was fun. That was fun to say. That was fun to say. All right. I got one more joke here for you folks. Actually, that's not really a joke. That's not really a joke. I'm going to end this show. I'll end you with this line here. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you giving me your time. It's such a blast to do this. Uh, I miss you folks so dearly. I wish I was in person with you folks. But here we are online, and I really appreciate you watching. Um, I love the show. I love uh, everything that we're doing. I love you. I love life. I really, really love life, okay? I love life. That's what I want to end saying. I want to end saying that I love life, you know? Look, to be honest, I hate life. I also hate life. I hate life just as much as I love life. And I really, really love life. My name is Peter Hartman. You're watching Bad Guru Nightly, and I am Bad Guru. Happy Valentine's Day. Go love someone. Go love yourself. Yeah, love yourself.